uh, now. <laughs> Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, tutorial of sorts where uh, we are going to go through StreamYard. My name is Kira Wisniewski. I am the executive director of Art and Feminism. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and this is Richard, uh, username Pharos, uh, who introduced me to StreamYard. And we want to kind of show today just a, a little bit about how it works on the back end and how art and feminism organizers might consider using this as a tool for your virtual event. Yeah, StreamYard is a, a multi-platform tool. So the nice thing about it is it is it uh, is it broadcasts live to multiple platforms. It can broadcast to YouTube, uh, to Facebook, to Twitch. I can also broadcast to multiple channels on each of those. Um, and the nice thing about it is it, it provides a sort of a television-like uh, ex life experience. Um, and you can um, broadcast to a wide area without um, the constraints of having a Zoom room. Um, and it's a little bit more of a polished production value. And you also, um, the nice thing about it is, is it, it can take in comments from all the different uh, social platforms. So you can take in comments from Facebook, from YouTube, etc and you can post them um, together and, and respond to them. Uh, so here is this, this is the little room that uh, exists for uh, that exists for StreamYard. Um, there are different levels of access. So the uh, the primary level is, I guess, the, the producer level, <laughs> um, which is where you, um, the person who, who creates the, the StreamYard account um, has it tied to the email address, and then they receive a, 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 a like a, a six-digit code, I believe. Um, maybe it's a four-digit code, I forget. Um, it's not it's not password based. So anyone who is on the producer level, you have to give them their uh, you have to give them their code within like fifteen minutes or something. Um, the other level is uh, a guest level, which is you just give a URL to people who are appearing on screen. You can have up to ten people appear on screen at a time. Um, you want to give that uh, that guest code to anyone who's appearing on screen, not to the general audience. To the general audience, you would probably give a YouTube or uh, other social platform link. Um, nice thing about it is so you of, good just to like elaborate on that a little bit one of the cool things about Streamyard, um something that andrew lee has mentioned who you do the the wikipedia weekly podcast with and who literally wrote the book about wikipedia <laughs> is that Streamyard actually meets audiences where they are so they don't have to download any extra software they um can attend your event by places they already are existing. So whether that be YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Twitch, this can simultaneously stream to all of those places. And we know other tools also do streaming, but it's usually limited to just one channel. So that's a, something that makes StreamYard unique is that yes, Zoom, you can choose to stream to also YouTube or Facebook, but it's an or, or at least that's how it is right now in early January, 2020, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, ho hopefully it advanced, but the uh, yeah the advantage of it is that you can you know you don't have to like pick and choose, and you can you can broadcast to multiple channels, and it's very it's like a little bit a little bit of a neutral platform in that way, and hopefully you can get a broader audience. I mean it's and it's 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 nice for presentations, it's nice for things that are can be a little bit on the fly. Um, the nice thing about Streamyard is it's a little bit like a like a DJ studio, so you can put up different banners. Um, so this is just some some banners that we have prepared. Um, you can even do like little rolling banners. Um, if you like, you can create a new banner. Like you can just do, you know, breaking news one millionth A plus F article. And, I could, and then I could put that on the screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Um, <laughs> you can, you can, and you can do it as, 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 the, as the event goes on. Um, and you know, in, in reaction to say comments that people might have uh, on the panel or or in the in the border discussion, there is also a private chat. So here you can just I can discuss back and forth with Kira or any of the the, the co-producers or the guests. Um, so they, you know we should uh, you know let's let's make sure we get this finished in, by you know two o'clock. Um, maybe we should move on from this topic. Maybe we should make sure to cover this topic, which is important. Hey, there's an important question uh, that's been asked in the chat that we should get to. Um, speaking of the chat. This is where you get uh, the, uh, the the stream of comments that could come from Facebook, they could come from YouTube, they could come from I think Twitter, wherever, um, and you'll they'll sort of appear as a uh, you know as, as as a list of, of different things that'll pop up occasionally, and anyone who's a producer can click this button and just quickly show it on screen. Um, screen scroll on screen that comment, especially things that might be like 
comment on the proceedings that are happening now or a question that um, that you might want to ask to someone. Um, yeah, you can do that. Uh, you know, during during the course, you can put it up and down at any given time. Um, it's also it's a nice way of interacting with uh, with you know a broad audience in a in a pretty safe way that is Zoom bombing proof. <laughs> So another cool thing that you can do, um, I'm not signed in as a producer, I'm just signed in as an attendee, but so another cool thing that Richard can do as a producer is can change the view. So right now we kind of have like this little side yeah. by side situation. Yeah, so, so there, so yeah, so if you see this this line here, so this is this is just one person, this is two people, and this is two people side by side. Uh, this is us in a little bit of a, I don't know, it's like it's more appreciative of the widescreen. Um, this is one person big, one person small. Um, this is, you know, equal size, uh, and you can also put people in and out. So you can, um, so I, I, if I remove Kira for a moment, um, you'll see that Kira is still there. I can still see Kira. I can still see Kira move if Kira wants to like gesture or something like it's my, I should go on now. Kira can do that. Um, but, but Kira's video is slightly grayed out. Um, and when I put Kira back in, I click add to stream and then Kira's back or I could take myself out and, uh, I could put myself back if I want. And the thing is, is that what the viewer sees on any of the platforms that they're watching on youtube facebook etc they just see that main window yeah. so like what you're seeing right now in the screen capture this is definitely like the the producer or back end view yeah so th this just this 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 green square which in this case is you know it's a nice uh art and feminism improved green and it has a uh it has a it has an a plus f logo here which is be customized um in uh the, the branding section so if you're if you're curious here um, there are all sorts of logos you can put here, including custom logos. So here's the A plus F logo. In this case, it's the white space one. There's another one uh, that uh, is is uh, blue and, and black, but you know we're using white space for now. But you can just change these, you know, you know, sort of whenever suits the occasion. Um, you can do like short video clips. Um, so this is just to give you an example one, and I'm gonna not gonna show the whole thing. Yeah, that wasn't very exciting, but you can you can do a short video clip. I think it's up to five minutes that it works fairly well. Um, and you can you know if you're a little bit of an AV person, you can probably do something longer. Um, but it's it's easy to do short ones. Um, and the cool thing with that feature too is that like if for instance in your event you have maybe just um, a quick small video of a, a guest who couldn't join live, you can have them like send you a video of them talking about a piece that you're particularly interested in highlighting in your event. And then that's a way for you to still play or bring in that voice at the same time. Yeah, you can, um, you can, you know, sort of share with a broad group. The nice thing about this is that, um, you know, like I say, you can have several hundred people watching and participating at the same time. Um, something that we've done in the past over the Wikipedia Weekly uh, uh, network, sometimes we've, we've, uh, we've promoted a particular geographical area. So we might, you know, say, you know, we're doing a, an event uh, with the Caribbean, and so we share it with um, people on a central on a central notice banner for people in the Caribbean or some other geographical region, um, and you can have sort of a, a sort of a wide ranging participation in that way. Um, I guess I should share the so right now on the top right corner you'll see of my screen there is a record button. Um, the well it, normally there will be a broadcast button, um, but this is because we're not set up to broadcast right now. Um, it's important to make sure to press the broadcast button <laughs> when you start broadcasting. Uh, it's, remote, it's also important to, to remember to press the stop broadcasting button when you wish to stop broadcasting. Um, you schedule the uh, the broadcast in advance um, on, on StreamYard. The interface uh, gives you which outlets you want it to go to. So I want to go to this Facebook group and this YouTube channel and this Twitch thing and also this other YouTube channel and this other Facebook group is, as well. Um, you want to do it um, you know, in advance if you can. Uh, the one there's one limitation is that on um, and it automatically creates the event pages on YouTube and on Facebook, etc. Uh, the one limit one of the limitations is that Facebook I think does not accept uh, events that are scheduled more than one week in advance. Um, so you might want to keep that in mind. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't do it, but you know, you want to have that uh, you know restriction in mind. Um, another restriction on Facebook you will notice is that um, Facebook requires uh, your permission. Uh, if someone sends a comment from Facebook, it will have um, they will not have their uh, picture and their and their name and their Facebook name unless they um, specifically allow that from the StreamYard um, 
from the StreamYard uh, service. The StreamYard has to give, you know, Facebook has to give permission to StreamYard. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so Kira has a has a um, has a has a screen share. Um, so anyone who is a, a guest, they don't have to be a producer, can share a screen share. You'll see it's in the slightly grayed uh, format, and I can add it to this stream here. Um, so there's uh, Kira. This is in this case we're not we're not giving. Uh, in this case we're, uh, we're we're having it on the side. And if Kira is speaking, then I can just remove myself, and Kira can have you know the. And what's cool about this too is that. Um, even though Richard is a producer and I'm a guest, is I can still I'm the one who's driving my screen share, so I can do you know I can advance the slides here. I don't have to do the dreaded uh, Richard, please next slide, um, and to just kind of go through the slides, and then I also can choose when I want to stop sharing as well. Yeah, we have screen share autonomy, which is pretty good. Um, the nice thing about it is that Kira can load that page before. You know, doesn't have to like you know ask permission for me or whatever, and then you know, and, and then we do that with multiple pages, uh, multiple screen shares, and then the producer can just turn it on, and you know, the guest can turn it off at any at any given time. Um, so that's a, a nice feature, and you can also you know take people on off the screen. Um, something that I should just mention. Sometimes it's a little confusing. If you're not on the screen, your 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 voice is not in the podcast. You're not in the broadcast, and no one can actually hear you. So if I take myself off the screen or take here off the screen, um, you can't actually hear us. Um, even in, in you know even among the guests themselves and you would the, the best way to communicate is either you can do like this or you can um, you can cut communicate in the private chat which is the best way um, and just keep an eye on the private chat especially if you know there's like some issue going on it's better to do it there than in like you know a dozen external uh, messaging platforms that you might use <laughs> so it's a good idea to keep an eye on that um, Richard can you do the the view where either you or I are small smaller yeah. Here, so this is also here. a view where we've done um, sign language interpretation. Uh -huh. So you can kind of have like the main view be the main speaker. And I don't know sign language, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to be disrespectful, but like I potentially could be the sign language interpreter um, doing sign language to uh, if that's something that you're using in your event to make it more accessible for your audience, if that's something your community needs. Yeah, right now I'm the big picture on the on the, uh, on the left of your screen, and I'm going to see if I can, can I, uh... oh yeah, and I switched, I switched uh, Kira to be the main picture, so I'm going to switch back, and you know, you can do that whenever someone is talking, someone is, you know, taking the main part of the conversation, especially if, you know, it could either be like a spontaneous thing or it could be because this is their, this is their presentation segment. And you can, like I said, you can take some off the screen entirely. Um, if it's like more of a solo presentation, you can, you know, emphasize their um, thing. If, you know, you can emphasize their, uh, their screen share more. And you can just do this. I mean, like I said, you can, you can fit like 10 people on the screen um, currently. Um, you may not want to do 10 people all the time. <laughs> you probably don't. But um, it's a capability that you have and you can sort of play with it and how you know, there's, well, there's a certain limited capacity to play with how, how big they are. I don't think you can't, like, you know, say this person is five is this many pixels and this person is that many pixels. I mean, there's only, like, a couple of settings, but it's it's simplified enough that it's you're able to do it on the fly uh, fairly easily. It's a little bit like a like a turntable thing, um, so that's nice. So I just want to highlight that we aren't, we're not being paid to just tell you anything about StreamYard. We're just trying to show this as a tool. And so it is a tool that has a free version, but um, it is a little bit more limited. The version that we're using to demonstrate with right now is this basic $25 a month one, and it's billed monthly. So a cool thing about that is that you, if you know you're having your event next month, you can maybe buy it now to kind of practice with it and then have the event next month so there'll be a total of fifty dollars um instead of paying for like an annual membership i think for a lot of the events that art and feminism does um the basic is probably fine you probably don't need the professional but of course choose your own adventure and then related to all of that i wanted to highlight that uh, we do have a quick guide for funding art and feminism events that's available on our website. And we would be happy to cover this type of cost for um, 
for you to help do your event. And so the art and feminism micro funding is up to about 250 US dollars. So would definitely cover the expense such as this. And this is available on our website. So you can check that out um, at artandfeminism.org. I also wanna highlight that if you're thinking about larger parts of your event being bigger, um, the Wikimedia Foundation rapid grants for art and feminism, the period for that is January 11th through February 11th. And that is for funding from about 500 to $2,000 and um, that's US. And they also can fund for things that are technology related to having a virtual event. Yeah, so there are a lot of options. I mean, this is, you know, we're not, this is not a commercial for StreamYard. It's just a convenience service from Sweden, I think. Um, that, that we discovered recently and that's been useful during the pandemic. Hopefully there will be an open source version uh, that will be in, around in the future. But until then, uh, this is one tool among many that you can use. Yeah, and if you have questions about how to use this tool, um, you can definitely reach out to Richard or myself. Uh, Slack is probably, or the Art and Feminism Slack is probably a really easy and quick way to get to us. But welcome your thoughts or comments. If you have like other, you're a StreamYard pro and you're like, actually, this would be a really chill thing that other organizers could use using StreamYard. Like, let us know that too. We definitely are continually learning all this together um, as we are in this, this period where we're doing almost exclusively virtual events. We're also doing a couple screen captures of um, also using Google Meet and Zoom to potentially use your virtual event. So be sure to check those out too, if that interests you. But um, Richard, thank you so much for your time and kind of walking us through. I'm trying to think if there's any other features that we should highlight. Um, I, I think we, I think there's, I mean, we don't think we need to get into avatars and, um, but they just, you know, keep in mind that you can add, you know, banners on the fly. You can have all sorts of branding elements that you can, if you want to design, you know, special logos or things like that, you're, very welcome to do that. Um, you can customize it with the, change the color, change the background, you can do all sorts of fun things. And that might be like appropriate to any particular segment that you're going on. You can say like, you know, coming up next is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, um, thank you for watching. Thank you, Richard, for showing us the back end of StreamYard. And let us know if you have any questions. Okay, thanks. <laughs>